Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to the Spiritual Roundtable. And uh, today, today is Wednesday, August 12th. And so welcome, welcome to the Spiritual Roundtable with me. I'm back. It's I've been off from uh, live streams for about two weeks. And tonight, or today, I should say, this afternoon, um, is my first time back with the Spiritual Roundtable. And I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Uh, I missed you. I missed being hanging out with you and having these kind of spiritual conversations. So welcome, everybody that's in the live chat. Thank you so much for being here. And welcome to those that are joining me through YouTube. Thank you so much. Did you guys know that through our partners at Be Live TV? Live <laughs> that we can simulcast now uh, between our Facebook business page and also our business YouTube channel, which is way cool, way, way cool. So welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, my goodness. It feels like it's been forever since we've had a conversation, hasn't it? It's all, and it's been two weeks, two weeks. So before I get rolling down the road too far, I would like to invite you to do something with me, and that is to to send the video, the live stream video, um, to maybe a friend or to your, I don't know, to your newsfeed. We got to get the the well primed again because it's it's been a while since we've had a show, and so I'm going to send send this over to um, my newsfeed if I can. Let's see. I don't know if it's going to let me. I might have to go back one. Yeah. I have to go back one. Okay. So I'm going to send it over to my newsfeed. And just to remind my friends that I'm live streaming. This is going to take me just a second. Um, and inviting them. There we go. We get that posted. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, Rob, Rob's here. Hello, Rob. Cindy's here and Marie's here too. Hang on, guys. I just have to do it one more place. And that is um, sending it over to the groups. So we're doing um, the peeps. There we go. There. You know, and I should probably send it over to a few people that I've promised that I would send it out to them. And let's see if I can remember who to send it to. And I'm not going to send it to Cindy. She's already here. And let's see. I think that's it. Marie's here too, so we won't send it to Marie. I'll send it over to Bobby though. And Deb. Judy. Yeah, that should do it. There we go. Good. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for waiting. And so I'm going to turn down my volume on my phone. I'm so glad to be back, back in the saddle again, as they say. And so Marie's here. Hello. Happy Wednesday to you too, Marie. And Cindy's here too. She says, missed you. I know I missed you guys too. Thank you. And Rob is here too. Rob is twas but a fortnight. <laughs> exactly. A dang two weeks, right? Well, for most of you, most of you know why I was um, gone for two weeks. Um, I was taking care of family. Um yeah, my husband, Paul, had surgery um, July 24th. And so it took us about a week to kind of get things all prepared and, you know, and that sort of thing. And then um, he had his surgery. And then I was basically offline that week uh, following his surgery. And then last week, um, honestly, it was I'm, I was just so tired <laughs> that, you know, I couldn't I couldn't see myself doing a live stream as tired as I was. And so, um, and so everybody's doing fine. Now Paul is uh, well into recovery and doing really good. Uh, my mom, um, she is hanging in there. She, you know, we also had um, her youngest sister um, walked on, passed away um, about three weeks ago. And so um, mom has been in grief and, you know, that kind of takes a toll on the physical and emotional bodies, right? So she's hanging in there though, you know, she's doing okay. She's working her way through it. And uh, yeah, I think she's in the best place 
she can possibly be at this moment. So, um, and right now she's probably taking a nap, <laughs> probably. So tonight or today, I should say, I keep saying tonight. It's actually afternoon here where I live. Well, I don't know where it's at when, uh, what time of day it is around Grandmother Earth where you are, but right now it's afternoon here. And, um, you know, this particular afternoon live stream that I do, um, the Spiritual Roundtable, is all around the information that um, I receive through a divination card that I do, that I draw in the morning for the week for the group. Okay. And, um, and so we have a, a conversation around the information from the card. And the intention is pretty much the same week to week. Um, I'm calling on my entire um, spiritual team to come and to show me or tell me the information that's important for us to know about this week uh, for our soul growth, for our um, um, a soul contract, right? And it's all based upon, upon remembering remembering how to hold the energy of joy right and so and so we have two cards today and we're we continue to use the same deck uh sacred spirit reading cards by anna stark right we've been using the same deck for quite a few months now anna is from australia and also the young man who does the illustrations, Louis Dyer, he's also from Australia. So we're, we're seeing the information through that Australian lens, okay? And it's very interesting, very, very interesting. So we've got two cards today, brand new cards, cards we've never had before. And Cindy's saying there's a lot of stress taking care of loved one. Yeah, there is, you know, because when somebody that you love is in pain and there's very little you can do about it, right? Um, yeah, it does wear on you. Earl, yesterday, I was sharing that um, uh, the house smells really good, though, because I've been using a lot of essential oils <laughs> for mom's pain and also to uh, to clear the house, right, um, to make it um, a comfortable place for Paul to recover. And so the house smells really good um, between, um, yeah, I use Young Living Oils. And so the blend, the blend that I was using for mom is Panaway. So it smells really good. And we've also been using Thieves um for um the clearing piece right and so uh, yeah it smells really good all right so here we have two cards today and like i said they're cards that we've never had before so it's very interesting here's the first card here's the first card clear and activate it's the ninth card in the deck and it says create sacred space Cleanse your environment. Cleanse your environment. Create sacred space. Clear and activate. Number nine in the deck. And, you know, nine numerologically is all about completion, right? And it's also one of the creation numbers. Three, six, and nine. And it's very interesting. Um, the person in the card um, is facing sideways with arms out hand palms up in a receiving mode right long hair and i don't know if you see that let's see if we can get the camera to cooperate here on his or her arm you see those three lines with the dots yeah interesting isn't it and it also appears on his cheek or her cheek let's see if we can get the camera to focus i don't know if you guys can see that there's three also on the cheek or on the jawline i should say if i can get the camera to focus that would be great there it is right eyes are open open and it almost looks like there's tears or water. But right underneath the eye is a very bright spot, like on the cheekbone, right? Eyes open. There's light language all throughout the face. You get columns of light coming down. 
vortex. There's so much going on in this particular card. And if you notice, even with the palms of the hands that are open, you see how the chakra in the, the palms and the hands are all lit up too. Right? And bright, bright light going all the way down the front, down through the chakras. And it's all about clear and activate, creating sacred space, cleansing your environment. And if you noticed, I had said that, uh, you know, the house, my house smells really good because we've been using essential oils, right? Um, yeah, and we, I've had um, the essential, one of the essential oils in a diffuser um, so that it can permeate through the house. Um, it's near um, a cold air return, so it can be um, literally taken throughout the entire house. And that's one way to be able to clear because I was really, really busy with um, making sure that mom and Paul were comfortable making meals, taking care of George. I didn't have the kind of time that I would take to clear a space, right? So the diffuser and having the essential oils in there has been very, very helpful um, in clearing um, any kind of lower vibrational um energies, right? Because you have to know that when you're in pain, because most of us have, have experienced both emotional and physical pain, um, sometimes we create a lower vibration because we're in so much pain, right? Yeah, I've been there. I've used very colorful language <laughs> when I've been in ex extreme pain. And so, you know, we have to be able to clear out those negative thought forms, right? So creating a sacred space for yourself. There's many ways that you can do that. Um, those of you that use Reiki, you can do that. Um, those of you that have drums, you can use your drums. Those of you who um, have certain divine beings that you, that you turn to, such as um, Mother Mary or Archangel Michael, right, is, is making that prayer to them to come and help you to set the sacred space, to clear out any uh, lower vibrational energies, right? And so there's lots of ways that you can do that. The most important thing is to remember to do it. That's the important thing. It's the, um, because a lot of times we get so focused, right? On what we're doing or what we're experiencing that we don't um, call on the help that we have right at our fingertips, literally at our fingertips. And so, um, Creating your sacred space um, can involve a whole ceremony, right? Can be a very elaborate thing, or it can be a very, very simple, very simple. Both are very effective. The most important thing is your intention and having a good heart, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, it is a full deck. Exactly. Number nine. Cindy says, it reminds me of the circuit boards. Yes, it does. I have to agree. Um, very um, electric, electronic, right? And so for me, when I was looking at the cards, Cindy, I was thinking that um, this involves our electromagnetic body, our mind, right? is to clear and activate, clear and activate. And to be able to, to balance out our, our um, energy bodies, our, our chakras, right? And to, to be uh, grounded and that sort of thing. And so that part of us is, um, is our expression right? Is our expression. And so, yeah, I, I have to agree. It, that's what it reminded me too. And Dinah's here too. Hello, Dinah. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me back. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. She said, gosh, darn it all to heck. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I said. <laughs> well, hi, Violet. Good to have you here, lady. And Cindy is saying, I love Sage and having, putting the intent out there. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I've done very, um, 
I, I want to say that they're complicated in a way that there's many layers to it, ceremonies for clearing. But I've also done very, very simple ones, very, very simple. And, um, and both are very effective. It really depends on how clear you are with your intention and where you're at with your heart when you do that. Um, and it can be very, very effective, right? And I, I know, I know that I had to have a clear space for Paul to be able to, to do that healing, that deep healing that he was, that he's continuing to do. And so, and it's very helpful for mom in her space too. And it sure helped me a lot. <laughs> Yeah, trying to keep everything um, going here. You know, the meals. Oh, my gosh. Neither one of them um, were impatient with me at all. Um, but, you know, we, Paul and I did plan out meals. We did do about two weeks worth of meals. One was uh, frozen, made ahead and frozen. And the other one, we, I, we had a menu planned out. So it was, it was really pretty simple. But you know what? It still takes time. <laughs> it still takes effort. All right. So we all, oops, that's the back of the card. Um, we all have some experience in uh, clearing and also activating. The activating has to do with your intention, has to do with um, also activating your chakras. Right. It's turning really what that is, is turning your attention to them and feeling them and balancing. Right. Making sure that they're in balance. Yeah. So that the activation, many people might think that it, it there's um, much more to it. Um, there can be. But if you keep it very simple, it really is just being very aware and turning your attention to each one of your major chakras. Right. So here, here is what the author has to say. She says, everything in the universe consists of energy. It is a continual state of creation and recycling, adapting and changing to its current environment, interacting with everything that it comes into contact with. So from a feng shui perspective, right, from a feng shui perspective, um, there is one thing that is constant, and that is energy is constantly flowing and constantly changing. It may flow slowly or sluggishly, um, and it may get stuck at some points, but it just gets slowed down. It never gets stopped, right? And so that's one thing that we can count on is that there's going to be change. And if we recognize that, we take it in, be aware of it, we can actually be in the flow of that change and asking our helpers, our helpers to transmute, to change that lower vibrational energy that might be in our space, to change it, transmute it into something that is a higher vibration with intention. Right? So, um, yeah, energy is constantly flowing, always changing. Nothing in energy stays the same, including us. Because at a soul level, at a spirit level, we're constantly changing. Even though it might not feel like it, um, it's constantly shifting and changing. That's why it's important to be grounded. That's why it's important to be grounded. Yeah. All right, I got to check something here with my computer. There we go. I'm going to make sure it's plugged in so we have enough battery. So <clears throat> she goes on to say, the author does, energetic clearing applies to all areas of our life. In other words, it involves both our, all of our four bodies, our mental, our emotional, our physical, right? And our spiritual. That when we're clearing a space that we include all of that all of it. So that when we are in that space that is cleared and balanced, that our bodies can relax. Our bodies, especially our energetic bodies, that are constantly shifting and changing in order to balance the energy that we're in constantly. And so when the space that we're, that we're residing in, that we're physically in, 
When that's balanced, our bodies don't have to work as hard and as much to stabilize and to balance. That makes sense. That's feng shui. That's feng shui. And that's why it's important to have your space, your physical space, um, cleared and balanced so that you can relax, that you can relax. Some people would call that a sanctuary, that you have a sanctuary. All right. So she goes on to say that when you are faced with a change, change, I'm sorry, challenging moment, when you're faced with a challenging moment, your energy centers become affected. A to and fro struggle or a push pull factor comes into play as you navigate these issues or interactions, which is, I think, is kind of a rule of thumb. Okay. That when you're feeling like you're feeling that energy or that where you're at, um, it starts to affect your mental mind, that you're feeling that push me and pull me kind of energy. Um, and it's hard to make a decision to discern, right? There's certain things that you have to pause, notice it, and then do a grounding, right? Connect with your spiritual team and say, okay, I need some help here. What's going on? Why, why am I experiencing this? And so we're reaching out for help, right? Because we don't have to do this alone. It makes it so much more more complicated and uh, painful when we're doing it alone. That's for sure. Cindy is saying, I have felt automatic activation just watching something that resonates. Yes, absolutely. Music. Music is uh, probably the most simplest. And to be really aware of what you're taking in or what you're playing, right? So there's certain music that you can play in your home that will um, help shift the energy. Mozart, Beethoven, they all have very high resonance, right? Um, anything that's very harmonious. Yeah. There's certain other music like, um, you know, Gregorian chants and that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you can use music and it, and it can also be pictures, images that will help shift and change. Dina. Dina is saying, I have been playing Ava Maria by Ashna in the house, um, especially when the boys return from school. It has been healing and clean, uh, cleansing energy in the sound har harmonies. I'm told it embodies the energy of Mother Mary. Yes, it does. And so you're spot on, Dina. Spot on. So good, isn't it? And it's simple. It's simple. You found something that works for you. Cindy said, I have noticed how watching and joining in these conversations raises my vibration. Yes. I, I think it has to do with um, our mental thoughts, right? So we get to shift those. Rob says, I've, I've heard it called a location of power. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It could. Yeah. It's the word power that usually uh, throws some people and because it has a lot of different connotations and meanings to it. Um, but a, um, a power center and a feng shui sort of um, vocabulary, that is where um, two energies intersect is a power center. Okay. And that can be a very good thing. It can be a very good thing. Um, but you have to be really intentional about whatever you use it for because it's got big medicine to it. <laughs> Rob said, I was um, by a native German speaker, so it was took a bit uh, assimilated, the very different language, but the sacred grove of the Druids qualifies. Yeah, I would I would agree. I would agree. Uh, it's a power center. Uh, and says, by the way, when listening by phone, YouTube is far superior to Facebook. Really? Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's a good thing to know, right? When we're simulcasting. All right, let's see what else the author has to say. She says <clears throat> that activating and clearing the energy centers through meditation or chakra balancing will improve your mental endurance. Currently, you may be feeling emotionally sensitive and hypersensitive to your environment, including weather and atmospheric pollution. 
take positive steps to create an energetically supportive environment and understand the relationship with self. And it really sounds like, like many of you that are in the live chat understand that and you're actually doing something about it, right? Because it feels good. It feels good. So why not? Why not? And for me, the simpler, the better, the simpler, the better, because that means that we're actually going to do it. If it get, gets too elaborate and complicated, um, we tend not to do it, right? So keep it simple. All right. So she goes on to say, right now, you need to switch focus. Being caught up in gossip, jealous conversations, participating in lower energy activities, repeated dramas, and toxic environments must all be shifted now. If you want to live a better life, you must be accountable for your actions and reactions, right? So when we look at the card, we could see this person being in both the receiving and the giving, right? That we affect the environment that we're in. And there's consequences to our actions and our thoughts. And we get to choose. We get to choose with our thoughts and our actions what those consequences could be. So if you have, um, as my mom would say, you know, doing it in a good way. In other words, you're, you're in your heart. You're having good thoughts and you're doing it in a good way. The consequences are going to be positive consequences. If you choose, if you choose the opposite um, and to be um, either the starter of the drama, an active participant of the drama, <laughs> you know, uh, an active participant in those lower vibrational thought forms, those kinds of things, there's consequences. And the consequences to those actions and behaviors are what we would call of a lower vibration, right? But you have to remember, remember this, is that energy is, is neither positive or negative. Energy is just energy. It depends on how we use it and how we use it. And so it's our responsibility, right? It's our responsibility in, in deciding how, how do we want to express this? Yeah. And I know sometimes it's harder, right? It's a little bit more of a challenge, <laughs> <laughs> to take it in and to be positive, right? To come from it from a, a positive point. Sometimes it's it's difficult. It's a challenge, but that's where our soul growth is is in that that friction, because we're 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 making conscious decisions, conscious decisions, and so you know we could see it as no bad choice, right? Because we're going to learn. We're going to learn something from it. All right. So she goes on to say that um, spending time outdoors can re refresh your mind and bring you back to the present moment. Negative and imbalanced energies can shift through natural light and atmospheric absorption through plant life. So when we go out and we take those strolls those walks or even if you just go out and sit on your back porch or on your deck for a few minutes right take a break take a break um and you can shift the energy that way as well the most important thing i think is that we make a choice we make that choice yeah and rob goes on to say that i was oh we read that one it was the next one i wanted and that was the the facebook okay we're caught up. So, you know, this particular card is, I think, of, of, about clear and activate. The number nine in the deck, it's about creating sacred space, cleansing your environment, and to be holistic about it. All of your bodies, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, it's one way that we can help ourselves to be in the moment and to have the presence 
the awareness to be grounded into that space, right? So, you know, spirit really is sharing a lot with us with this particular card, this first card. We have the ability to shift the energy, the vibration. It's a good reminder that we have that, the uh, not just the opportunity, but the capability to do that. And many of us, sometimes we, 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 um, we kind of get stuck in that. Um, why is this always happening to me? Right. The, the, um, some would actually call it a pity party, right? Now I've been there. I've had my own pity parties on occasion. Um, and, and it does take a little bit of, of, all right, we need an attitude adjustment here. <laughs> That's just another way of, of saying, um, clearing the space. Right. And so, it really is our choice. It's our choice. It's our awareness. It's our uh, choice to, to take the opportunity to do that shifting, right? Well, that we can change it. I think it's a great, great reminder that spirit is sharing with us today and that we affect the environment around us whether it's in your own home, in your own, in your workspace, even when you're out there doing grocery shopping or any kind of shopping, right? Now that we're, we're back to uh, being out there more often, we can shift the energy where we're at in our, just because we're minding our own vibration, <laughs> we can shift it. And the people around us, they feel that shift. They feel it. Here's the second card. Now, these are two cards that we've never had before. This is ground your light. Ground your light. Let your soul shine. Shine your light in the world. It's very bright, isn't it? A very bright card. Lots of green. It's almost like that person is overlooking maybe a valley or they're out in nature on a hillside, right? And you can see how their energy is being grounded to Grandmother Earth, right? That there's this, this flow of energy between the person and Grandmother Earth. Everything from the mental mind, the um, third eye, the, the penile gland in the middle of the head, going down to the throat chakra in the back of the neck there, down to the heart chakra, going all the way down to the solar plexus and the sacral, down to the root, connecting to the earth. Ground your light. Number 18 in the deck, which is numerologically a nine. So technically we have two nine cards here today. 99. <laughs> Ground your light. You know, and for most of you, you realize that this is an ongoing message here with me, right? Um, we've been on the same message in different ways different perspectives since um, 2018, actually, December, December 12th of 2018. We started talking about being grounded, grounding, 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 grounding. <clears throat> we didn't, at that time, we didn't, when we were talking about it, we didn't realize how imperative, how critically important it is to have um, yourself grounded right? We do now. We understand what that message was all about way back then and how we're applying it today and the reason why it's so important, right? Yeah. It always has been. It always has been. It's just that um, 
taking this information about being grounded and shining your light um, in the context of what our life and energy is like today out in the world. I got to sneeze. Hang on. <laughs> It's going to happen. <laughs> was, did you ever do that? You're just going to sneeze and then it just goes away. What was that? It felt like a big sneeze coming. Allergy season. That's what that is. Some people would call that a clearing. An energy clearing. <laughs> okay. So... <clears throat> In order for us to, to really um, illuminate our soul, right? That's shining your light. Every time you use your gifts, every time you apply your gifts, you are um, expressing your soul and you're shining. You're shining whenever you apply your gifts. And so with this card, ground your light means that we're taking our gifts and we're grounding them to the earth plane. In other words, we're using them. We're applying them in our daily life. And I know some people say, well, I don't even know what my gifts are. The thing is, is that you have them. We all have them. We all came in with something, more than one, right? And so we're shining no matter what. Sometimes it's it's a little bit of a dim light, and other times it's a brilliant illumination, right? So um, whether or not you know what your gifts are, it's the more important thing is that you're happy, that you're joyful, because that's what you feel when you're using your gifts. That's what you feel. You feel accomplished. You feel strong. You feel empowered. All those really good feelings is when you're using your gifts. When you feel happy and joyful is when um, you're using your gifts in a good way, with a good heart. Right? Yeah, and I know that we've all been there at some point in some way. And so we can reflect on that and we can remember what did that feel like? What was I doing during that time frame? What was I working on? Right? Who was I with? What were we doing? And so you can start identifying for yourself what aspects brings you happiness and joy. And what were you doing? How are you applying your gifts? That's what it means to ground your light to the earth plane. Make sense? Cindy and saying, oh, I love that card. Me too. <laughs> Brand new card. We haven't had that one yet. She's also saying it's a very good visual picture for raising vibration. Yes, it is. Absolutely it is. And again, you know, it, it bo being both in the giving and receiving mode, right? The author goes says about this card is the method of grounding our energy bodies, auric fields, and consciousness is to solidify our being in the present. Through the grounding process, our emotional, physical, and spiritual bodies become unified, bringing balance and well-being to our soul and spirit. While this practice can be challenging, it is important for you to remember you are influence energetically by your environment so here again now see the second card is supporting the message of the first right and so in this last sentence that when we pr while this practice can be challenging it's important for you to remember you are influenced energetically by your environment so we can keeping that in mind we can shift the energy in our environment. We can clear it. We can um, have it blessed, right, by the creator's divine light, love, and truth and raise the vibration to the vibration of love, to the vibration of joy. And we can ask that 
to happen. We can call on the angels. We can use Reiki. We can use a whole lot of stuff to be able to shift that, that uh, template, that energy flow. Right. Okay. So she goes on to say that grounding anchors your energetic fields and connects you to your emotional body while being present and mindful within those moments. Strengthening your aura and emotional and physical body is the primary goal of mindfulness as we feel everything that we experience through this energetic space. Okay. So here's this with mindfulness. It's important, I feel, I believe that it's important for us to really be aware and take in our emotions, what we're feeling, okay, to identify it, no matter what it is, whether it is happiness, whether it's sadness, whether it's anger or joy or fear, is to turn our attention to it and to notice it, be aware of it acknowledge it right to acknowledge it because here's the reason why is that that's my husband's work phone <laughs> i don't know where he's at um so here's the thing is that when we turn our attention to no matter what emotion that we're experiencing and we sit with it for a moment right and we identify it what is it why is it here why am I supposed to experience this? Why am I noticing this? Right? When we sit with it and we can acknowledge it, it helps to build our resilience. Our resilience. And it's helpful when we're grounded. When we're grounded and we can experience these emotions from that state um, isn't as drama or trauma filled. I'm not saying that we don't cry or that we're not angry, but it's not over the top. It's not, um, it's not knocking you off balance, if you see what I mean. I think it's important for us to really identify our emotions when we're feeling them, when we're experiencing them, and to sit with it for a bit. You know, not that they take up residence. And we don't want that, but we do need to, to acknowledge them and say, okay, I see you. I feel you, but why are you here? What is this all about? And we're calling on our spiritual team for assistance, right? What is this? Why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing this? Why am I so angry? What's, what is the trigger with this, right? So we're learning but it also builds resilience. And we don't get that unless we practice it. Yeah, it's like a muscle. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I had that one. She says, call, call in the unicorns. <laughs> right. <laughs> Violet says, uh, to do a clearing, would you bring in all four, four archangels? You could, you could. Um, there's two, there's two angels, archangels that, um, are very, very good at, um, helping us to clear. And, um, one of them is Archangel Michael, right? And the other one is Archangel Metatron. Those two, um, are very good at doing the clearing the lower vibrationals out. Yeah. Now, when you're calling on the other angels, you can also call on them to help you in blessing the space um, with your intention, right? Whatever energy that you want to fill that space. So you could call on, on all the four archangels if you want. Sure, you could do that. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't. Yeah. Hmm. As you know, as a space clearer, We've been doing it for a really long time, since I was 13. Um, what's most important is that you're grounded and that you're you're in your heart when you're do when you're doing this grounding. And honestly, the simpler the better. The simpler um is it has is just as effective 
is something that's more complicated. Uh, when you when we get into the complicated in many layers, we tend some people tend to slip into their mental mind, and so then you don't have the balance between the head and the heart. Okay, so that's why I like to encourage people to do uh, a simple, so that you can you can really ground it to the earth plane in your heart. In your heart. So if simple for you is to call in the the four archangels, then I say go for it. That would be a good thing. Okay, you know, um, you know what I forgot to do in that first card is to give you the affirm affirmation. So here is the affirmation of the second card. The second card is about I anchor and ground my divine light in my heart. I am free. I anchor and ground my divine light in my heart. I am free. That's a good one, isn't it? That's what it means to to really be that lighthouse, you know, that lighthouse that has that very focused and tight light that that illuminates a lot, right? Um, yeah, because it's coming from the heart. It's coming from the heart. I'm going to skip back to that first card and give you the affirmation. Okay, here's the affirmation of the first card. I am a clear beacon of an infinite, pure, platinum, white light. It radiates through me and all around me. I am a clear beacon of infinite, pure, platinum, white light. It radiates through me and all around me. And so when you ground that to the earth plane, when you're grounded to Grandmother Earth, you are this bright light shining. And what does that mean for us this week, right? For me, what it reminded me of is that whenever we use our gifts, we're expressing our soul. And we radiate, radiate this brilliant light from our hearts. And we get to ground that to Grandmother Earth and bring that to our environment and change and shift that environment that supports us, right? And our loved ones too, and our loved ones too. Whenever we can have a space that we call our house or our home and we can shift it into the energy there, into an energy that supports us, that loves us, right? That's a good thing. It's a good thing that we have a place that um, we can go to really relax and to be loved so that we can continue, continue to use our gifts in that application. It's kind of like a, it's that sign of infinity, right? Constant motion, the, the energy is constantly flowing, but it's flowing in a balanced way, the balance of giving and receiving. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think it's a good reminder this week, isn't it? That we are conscious beings and we make our conscious decisions. We can clear our space. We can raise the vibration. We can use our gifts. We can ground that to the earth plane. That's called a lifestyle, guys. Living a good life, right? Shining your light. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. So, you know, one of the things, we've been, we've been doing these card readings together for a long time, right? Um, let's see, then this coming May will be three years, I think. I think it's three years. Can you believe that? Three years. Um, <clears throat> and something that we've learned along the way is that when I show you the cards that we, were drawn for that day, uh, for the week, um, when we show, when I show them together, the cards are together, that it's a very powerful moment when we take in the energy of the cards all at the same time, right? And so what we've learned is that um, when we are uh, grounded, centered, and balanced, that we can take in um, the information that spirit is offering to us in an optimal way, in an optimal amount. Right. So just take a moment 
and ground to grandmother earth right how much she loves us <laughs> and then take a nice deep breath in and then on the exhale asking your spiritual team your entire team to be there with you to help you to assist you in bringing in the information that off that is being offered today in an optimal way and an optimal amount for you okay all right so here we go we're going to um show you the two cards together here we go all right here are the two cards together this is the first card right clear and activate creating a sacred space changing consciously changing shifting the vibration of the space to a higher vibration of your of your environment right that's including all of your bodies mental emotional spiritual and physical that we have the choice to do that And the second card, the second card is grounding your light, number 18 in the deck, letting your light shine. And really, it is for me, it was all about our conscious way and awareness of using and applying our gifts. When we do that, we are our soul our soul is is shining in that application of our gifts and we can do that so much easier when our environment is balanced cleared and we're grounding all of this to the earth plane to grandmother earth bringing it into the present moment it's a nice reminder for us to use our gifts in the best way possible. Right? And I love the, the way that these cards, one, the first card in that darker blue, with the person's darker hair flowing, very yin colors, very female. And the second card is so bright, like full sunlight, right? Radiating, very gang, very male. So we have balance here. And it is a balance of giving and receiving. Right? Very impactful message this week. It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder um, for us to, to use our gifts and that we are conscious beings that we can, we can shift the energy's vibration. The energy is constantly flowing, right? And that we have the opportunity and the ability to be able to shift it into a higher vibration frequency that supports us so that we can use our gifts, so that we can shine our light, and that we can ground it to the earth plane. I like it. Good message. Yeah, so we're almost near the top of the hour. And, uh, um, yeah, I think I like it a lot. It's a good reminder for me. Truly it is. Because even when you have a very busy life, that we have to pause for a moment to remember that we're really these creative beings, right? That we are, um, spirit that we're pure energy 
and that we we get to use this this pure energy that we call our life in such a good way we when we're aware and we're awake we can make those decisions those conscious decisions when we're using our gifts to apply them yeah even in those busy times right and i know the busy times are the challenging ones right to be able to remember remember to use our gifts and how we're using them to be aware of it i know i know because <laughs> let me tell you coming off from the the last uh while well, we're in our third week um here at home that yeah when it when it's a challenge we forget we forget to use our gifts we forget to call on help um yeah and so it's cards like this to help us to remind us that we have the opportunity and we have all kinds of help too, both in the, the seen and the unseen, right? So with the information, the conversation that we had today, whatever resonated with you, my suggestion is to embrace it, embrace it, and then watch, sense, feel, see how this week's energy flows to you and around you and where this information could be helpful, right? Um, and if it didn't resonate, don't worry about it. It's okay. There's always next week and the cards drawn next week and to see if that resonates with you then, right? Maybe you're the messenger. Maybe you're the messenger and all you have to do is is send the, the recorded uh, version of this show, uh, maybe to a friend family member and um, then you're done because you're the messenger right yeah so i so appreciate you being here with me today i enjoy these conversations that we have and uh you know and to be able to take the information that we're giving and to be able to see how it can be helpful to us right yeah so enjoy enjoy the rest of your day um oh Wait, there's a, a reminder. I almost forgot. A reminder, there's a couple things coming up this week that you might be interested in here at Star Nations. Um, tomorrow is um, uh, Angel Therapy with Maureen Mann. Yeah. And her show is on at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And she is, um, I should remember this because I just put it out there. Hang on. Let me see if I got it here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yep, key of life stuff. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so um, angel therapy. Angel therapy. Um, Maureen's going to be talking about angelic and ancestral signs. Is um, How have you wondered how to ask for signs from your angels and departed loved ones? It's going to be a good show. And also earlier that day, earlier tomorrow, uh, is Life Wisdom with Ed Langan. He's on at 4 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And he has a guest with him tomorrow. Trish Tyler is his guest. And uh, Trish is an expert on dating, intimacy, sex, and love. And Ed and she are going to be um, discussing, sharing about how she uses her intuitive abilities along with specific strategic and uh, protocols that assist us individuals to cultivate independent understanding of the same and opposite sexes. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. I hope you guys can join us for those two. Chakra sessions. Next week is another replay as Polly Joe is still on vacation. Um, and we're going to be watching um, an old show of hers from um, 2019, I think it was, Journey to Your Soul, it's called. And so that is all about, um, yeah, she says, many of us long to connect to our higher self, our true essence, our authentic being. And so that's the conversation in that replay. So hopefully you guys can join us tomorrow. we got three great shows for you. Tomorrow, Thursday. August 13th, and on Friday, Friday, hopefully you can join me and or Troon Franklin. Um, we're going to be announcing the official launch of her new book, Key of Life, and we're going to be doing a um, live, live stream book launch party on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time from Key of Life 
with Orchard Franklin, that fan page for her book. So watch for that and uh, hopefully you guys can join us. All right. All right. You're welcome, Marie. She's saying, always enjoy you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So with that, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and we'll see you back here next week for the spiritual roundtable and the next card draw for the group and have another spiritual conversation. Baba Mina, that's Potawatomi for until we see each other again. Love you guys. <laughs>